Well, good morning. Let me say that again. Good morning. I have a question for you. Why are you here? What? <laughs> Alan, did you say that? <laughs> what did you come here for? To worship God. What does that mean? Chevy? Praise the Lord. To praise the Lord. Spiritual growth. Spiritual growth? Absolutely. To grow spiritually. That's why we come to church. Turn to your neighbor. Turn to your neighbor. And say, Are you spiritual? Ask them. Be brave. Are you spiritual? Chevy, are you spiritual? Trying to be, right? That's right. We're going to talk about that in days to come. It's been suggested that we may be more of a socializing church than we are a spiritualizing church. So we're going to take that on as a challenge. How about that? Are you up to a challenge? Yeah. Are you up to a challenge? Are you up to a challenge? All right. Are you ready to worship? Then let's do it. It gives me great joy to be able to welcome you to this 13th Sunday after Pentecost in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're visiting with us today... We're so glad that you're here. And you know what we ask our visitors, right church? What do we always ask them? To let us know how we may serve them. Because that's what our Lord Jesus taught us to do. We are to be in service to one another. But we're happy they're here. We're also happy that our online folks are worshiping with us. I have it on good authority that there is a lady in Portugal this morning who is worshiping with us. How about that? Monticello worship is headed around the world, folks. So we welcome you. Let me lift up a few announcements to you, and then we will center ourselves for worship and we'll begin our time with the Lord. You know what Sunday after next is? Anybody know? What is Sunday after next? Now next Sunday is Labor Day weekend, right? But Sunday after next is Grandparents Day. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, we need to be inviting some grandparents, don't we? We absolutely do. And I challenge you, church, to do that. I challenge you to do it. Today in the morning message, we're going to take a look at something that a lot of people don't consider to be a sin. And we're going to find out whether or not it really is. And that, that thing that I'm talking about is jealousy. Oh. <laughs> you thought I was really going to home in, huh? <laughs> but you see, we laugh about it, but it's still a sin. And the Bible teaches us, as I'll point out in the message that no sin is greater than any other sin except for blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. That's the only sin that's greater than all the others. So if if you're running around committing adultery and you're getting jealous of that co-worker at work, those sins are equal. And we're going to talk about that this morning. We're going to talk about that. Next Sunday will be our Labor Day message. And I'll go ahead and tell you what the title is. It's entitled, I Hate My Job. (laughs) I Hate My Job. Renee Crowder is still teaching crochet classes. 
the first class went over like gangbusters. You're working on a master's degree now, huh? Okay. Good deal. Uh, Ardo Christian Ministries, you still have time to get the PB&J in, peanut butter and jelly. Now this one's critical. Please listen to me about this one. On September the 3rd, after church, we will have a church-wide planning meeting to make plans for our church picnic, which will be held on September the 24th. And I'm entitling our church picnic, it's our back to church bash. We did a back to school bash or participated in it, and now we're going to have a back to church bash because it'll be time for vacations to be primarily over and time for us to be regular in our attendance again and remember where we need to be on Sunday mornings and that is in God's house. Um, again, as it was last Sunday, you can see what last Sunday's offering amount was. It's at the bottom of that uh, bulletin sheet and there's something else that's new on that bulletin sheet. My email address has been purposely printed there and I'll explain why a little later. Today, right after the service, we will have a nominations committee meeting. Those folks are Terry Gallagher, uh, Cindy Steichleather, Diane Kimball, uh, Carol Berg, James Price, and Renee Crowder. Now, does anyone else have anything else for the edification of this church and the glorification of our Lord? Then are you ready to worship? No, you're not. You need to greet your fellow worshiper first. So stand and do that. Say hey to everybody.
You know, when somebody does something good, I think they need to be recognized. And this morning, I want to recognize all of you. You're the first church that I have ever pastored in more than 35 years that I did not have to say, okay, it's time to get in your seats. <laughs> you just do it. I mean, you do what you need to do, and then you just settle down and get in. Your, you're wonderful. And your heads are growing, I know. Let's look to the call to worship printed in your bulletin. There's a lot for me to read and a little bit for you to read. So let's go there now. Lord, we have heard the wonderful words from Matthew's gospel in which Simon Peter acknowledges Jesus as the Christ, the Son of the living God. We've heard how he was given the name Peter, the rock upon whom the church was to be built. We would like to be the kind of rock that Jesus can count on. To be strong in the face of adversity. Brave when danger is present. Compassionate when sorrow and strife prevail. We ask for your transforming love to help us to be true to Christ's teachings. Show us how to be faithful in our church attendance and steadfast in our devotion to God's kingdom so that we may do the work you have set before us. And the people responded, how? Amen. Amen.
next song is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. <coughs> there is a little bit of a key change right after the first verse, of course. standing we're going to have our affirmation of faith this is the last time that we'll do the Nicene Creed we'll start a new one next month and I know some of you as long as this creed is are saying hallelujah but anyhow let us look now to the screen and join with me we believe in one God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen and amen. Would you please be seated? For those of you who are new to that creed, 
You saw the words, I believe, in one Catholic church. In the Apostles' Creed traditional version, we say, I believe in the Holy Catholic Church. That in no way refers to the Roman Catholic Church. That word Catholic or Catholic means one, one. We are members of one church, Christ Holy Church. We are the body of Christ. And I just want to explain that at every chance I get because it is so confusing. If the ushers will come forward at this time, we will lift up to God our gifts. Father, we offer these gifts up to you with our love. And we hope earnestly that for others the doors of the kingdom may be opened. That through these gifts that empower the continued work of this, your church, 
that others may come to know of Jesus Christ and how he changes lives. For we pray this in his name. Amen. Good morning. How's everybody's first week of school been? Lovely. Horrible. First two weeks I was out for two days because I had strep. Oh, that's not fun, is it? So does everybody know, and I know this is a phone, but do you know what this is? A calculator. Very good. Do you know, can you type in some numbers for me? Can you type in, oh, hold on. Type in these specific numbers. Okay, you ready? Three, seven. 818. Do you know that when you flip it upside down, what does it say? Bible. Oh, isn't that cool? It says Bible, yeah. right? I didn't even know that. Isn't that neat? Yeah. So, you know, what do calculators, what do they typically help us do? Uh, solve math problems. Yeah, and help us ca- count things, right? Right? And so, solve mysteries. Solve mysteries, yeah. Like the mystery, (laughs) they help us add up big numbers really quickly, right? So, did you know that God doesn't need a calculator to add up numbers? No. He knows exactly how many every single time, right? You know, like on our calculator, how we spelled out Bible, the Bible tells us that God knows how many hairs are on your head. Even when your daddies and your papas start losing them, he still knows how many hairs are on your head, right? In Luke 12, 7, it says he counts each one. He knows even how many hairs, right? He also counts the stars in the sky. He counts the stars and he calls them by name. That's Psalm 147, 4. Okay, hold on, buddy. Do you know how many stars there are in the sky? There's one and then like 24 zeros after that. Do you know how researchers got that number? They counted all the stars in one galaxy, and then they figured out how many galaxies they think there are, and then they just times it by that many. But God knows how many stars there are, doesn't he? And he even knows them by name. So every time you think that God can't hear you or he doesn't know what you need, just know that God always knows. Okay? Um, So when you're worried and you're scared that God won't take care of you, just know that If he knows how many stars are in the sky and he knows how many hairs are on your heads or how many tears you've cried, he always knows and he knows how to take care of you, okay? Can everybody bow your head? Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day and thank you for these wonderful kids. Please bring us back and add a number and knowing exactly what we need and how to take care of us. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, I'd like to do the same thing today that we did last Sunday. Um, I'd like to ask you to peruse your hearts. And let's just take a moment and call folks out that we need to pray for. Who wants to go first? Aline Wall, Wall, heard that one. Linda Linda Peek. I almost said Peel. Linda Peak? And for Ruby? I didn't hear that one. Ellen Cone? Helen Cone. Okay. Nancy Harris, okay. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you. Who else? How about yourselves? 
When's the last time you prayed for yourself? I hope you're doing it daily. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, we have stilled our voices. We make no noise at this time because we crave to hear what you would say to us. As we lift up every person who has been called aloud and as we lift up to you those people whom we carry silently in our hearts. But Father, we also want to take this opportunity to thank you for the many things that you do for us. For the many times that we wish that we could draw closer to you. Only to turn and discover that you're right beside us. That you're in our hearts. That you're filling our thoughts. Lord God, today the people of this church, your church, are here to worship you. But we're also here to grow spiritually. For loving God, we are not a country club. We are not just about being a social gathering. We are about learning the things that you would have us to know about how to live according to your precepts, about how to consider others with love instead of animosity. Holy God, we thank you for these lessons. Sometimes we do well with them. Other times we fall short. But the greatest thing of all is we know that through what you have done with your son Jesus Christ on an ancient cross that we are forgiven. Father, I'm reminded of what John Wesley said as he lay on his deathbed. He said the greatest news of all is that you, God, are with us. So yes, we crave your presence this day and every day. And we ask you to be with us now as we continue to worship you. We ask you to be with us as we leave this place in a little bit, as we return to everyday life. Let us be a witness let us be in a candle shining brightly in a dark world. Let us show others the love of Jesus Christ. Now, dear God, hear us as we pray the prayer that your son taught us to pray. Jesus said, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Pray with me, won't you, church? Dear God, it's time to proclaim your word. As I always do, I pray that this precious group of people will hear your words and not mine. And I pray it in the name of Jesus, 
the Christ. Amen. That is the first time I've ever done that. I've done two things this morning that I've never done before. One, I came to the pulpit without a Bible. That's the biggest blunder a preacher can make. And secondly, I'm not one to stand up here and do that. I don't know what's into me. I hope the Holy Spirit. I want to begin this morning by announcing to you that three people live at my house. There's me. There's my wife, Meryl. And then there's also this little four-pound furry bundle of love. And if you don't believe she's a person in every sense of the word, you spend five minutes with her and she'll change your mind. And here she comes. Her name is Abby, and I'm going to use Abby this morning to illustrate a lesson. What are you, swimming? You hear me talking? Hey, how oh, well, I love you too. Look out here. Now, you're going to have to help me, okay? Can you help me? Can you settle down and help me? Yeah, they look pretty good, don't they? Yeah, they sure do. You want to look back here? Yeah, how about that? Not only that, but they can sing. Yeah. Okay, why don't you go with Mom, and I'll finish doing what I'm supposed to be. You're swimming again. Thank you for letting her come to your church this morning. Because I want to use her and tell you what happened not so very long ago. I was sitting at home in my recliner and she came running like those little legs about that long can run and she jumped up in my lap and she stayed there for about five seconds. Then she jumped down. She went over to where Meryl was sitting. That's my wife. Jumped up in her lap, laid down and promptly went to sleep. Okay. A little while longer, she did the same thing again. Jumped up in my lap, stayed there about five seconds, jumped down, went over to Meryl's lap, jumped up, made a couple of turns, you know, how dogs do, then laid down and promptly went to sleep again. Now, folks, let me ask you. Have you ever had something happen that left you standing there wondering what in the world is going on? Well, that's exactly what went through my mind. Well, kind of. What really went through my mind was, why is she favoring Meryl over me? (laughs) And, And that's not to say that, 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 You know, I was envious. As a matter of fact, when I said that, why was she favoring Meryl over me? Did you hear that sound? You know what that sound was? That was the sound of jealousy raising its ugly green head. Because I love that little dog dearly. Was I envious? No. I was flat out jealous. And that's what we want to talk about this morning. You may think that's silly. Let me assure you that it's not. And we can't pretend that jealousy is no big deal. That we need instead to focus on our bigger sins. Because we are jealous from time to time, aren't we? We find ourselves being jealous of of other people. We're jealous of their looks. We're jealous of their jobs. We're jealous of their families. We're jealous of the vacations they take. 
We're jealous of the skills that God has given them. We're jealous of their money. And you know what jealousy really is? It is overwhelmingly common, so common that we tend to overlook it. So let me pose two questions. Is jealousy wrong? Is jealousy a sin? Well, when you have questions like that, where should you go? Uh Uh-huh, gave you a clue, didn't I? Picking up my Bible. This morning, we're going to the fifth chapter of Galatians. This is one of Paul's prison letters. He wrote this letter while he was in prison in Rome. And we're going to the fifth chapter. And we're going to read verses... Oh, let's, let's read verses 16 through 20. Or 16 through 21. Hear now what God says to us. So I say, walk by the Spirit... And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. A lot of people out there need to learn that, don't they? But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you as I did before that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Did you happen to catch that word that was between discord and fits of rage? It was the word jealousy. Yes, jealousy is very definitely a sin. The University of California conducted a study of over 900 people, ages 18 to 80. And you know what they found out? They found out that the year before they conducted the study, that more than 75% of those people experienced feelings of jealousy. 75%. 5% away from being 80%, which would be 8 out of every 10 people. No wonder the Bible calls jealousy a sin. You know what jealousy really is, though? It's the opposite of love. It's the opposite of love. There's nothing comforting about jealousy. Let me tell you, when, when Abby was doing her jump up in the lap thing and go to sleep, and I started feeling jealous. There was nothing comforting about that feeling. There was nothing good about that feeling. As a matter of fact, I was feeling like something had crawled up in me and died. It was an awful feeling. And what does jealousy bring with it? Suspicion. It generates doubt and mistrust. It can take the most innocent thing and snowball it into something that smells like smoke and looks like it came straight from the pit of hell. It'll turn a good feeling into something awful. Into something awful. It fosters betrayal. It's been known to wreck careers, been known to wreck marriages, been known to cause murders. Okay, we can just about all agree that jealousy is not a good thing. But the question becomes, then what do we do about it? What do we do about it when we feel jealous over somebody or or something? What do we do about it when jealousy rears its, its green, ugly self? 
Well, the first thing we can do is realize that jealousy is nothing more than a feeling. What it really is, is really deceptive thinking. It tries to convince you that you're not being treated fairly. When, when Abby jumped up into Meryl's lap and stayed there longer than she did in mine, I should have been glad. I should have been glad. When our last dog died of old age, it only took me nine months to convince Meryl that we should get another dog. I should be glad that Abby adores her, and today Meryl adores Abby. I should have been glad. But instead, I let another feeling creep in and destroy those feelings of, of happiness. Jealousy is really deceptive thinking. You know what went through my mind? That I wasn't being treated fairly. Why was she choosing Meryl over me? It's like a lady said, Joyce, why did God make you prettier than me? Alex, I studied hard. Why did you make a better grade on that exam than I did? Fred, I've been working here a lot longer than you. I have more experience. How come you got the promotion that I should have gotten? We may not say these things, but hey, we're thinking them, aren't we? And it's called jealousy. Jealousy is like a shot of Novocaine that you get at the dentist. It numbs our disappointment. And it convinces us that someone else has had the satisfying experience that we feel should be ours. So that's the first thing we can do. It's realize that jealousy is, first of all, that it's a sin as bad as any other sin. And that it's just a feeling. And secondly, we need to realize that jealousy is pride at its worst. Like I said, I should have been glad that Abby adores Meryl. But I let my pride get in the way, didn't I? And thirdly, when we start feeling feelings of jealousy, we can just stop and count our blessings. I hope you're doing that. Do you stop every once in a while and take inventory of the many ways that Almighty God has blessed you? And they don't have to be major things. Now, it's hot outside, right? It's been hot outside, right? How many of you have air-conditioned homes? How many of you have air-conditioned homes? Come on, wake up. Or we'll have church outside. <laughs> I can remember, and I'm sure some of you can too, when homes were not air-conditioned. As a matter of fact, I think when I got married 51 years ago yesterday that my in-laws didn't have air conditioning in their home. So air conditioning is what? Say it out loud. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. How many of you had ice cream in the last six months? Lift a hand. Make us an interactive sermon. Was it bad ice cream? Oh, no. It was good ice cream. That ice cream was a blessing. I mentioned a, a lady who is in Portugal right now who is tuning in to our online worship. And I'll, I, I'll probably hear from her later today. She usually texts me. You know what one of her bliss, uh, biggest blessings is? Let me try that again. You know what one of her biggest blessings is? What would you do with Abby? Meryl just walked back. Oh, there she is. Got her on a leash. Okay. I thought she'd give him my dog away. Then I was going to get jealous. But you know what this lady's biggest blessing is? How many of you wear flip-flops? 
She loves flip-flops. To her, they're a blessing. Blessings don't have to be a major thing. They can be little bitty things. How many of you had something to eat in the last week that you really like? Lift a hand. Now, here comes the second part of that question. How many of you like liver? (laughs) Bless you, Diane. Bless you. Bless you. I do too. You know what? The fact that the rest of you don't have to eat liver is a blessing. And if you don't believe that, I'll just send some over to your house. And come watch you eat it to make sure you don't throw it to the dogs. Look, you start to feel those feelings of jealousy. One of the best ways to get around that is to just stop and start counting your blessings. Start counting your blessings. I have the biggest blessing of it all to share with you. Do you realize that Jesus Christ died for jealous people? You say, preacher, where in the world did you dig that up? He did. He died for jealous people because there is not a single person on the face of this planet who at one time or another has not felt jealous. Amen? Yeah. So he died for jealous people. Put two and two together. And except for blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, He took the sins of every one of those people to the cross with him. And because of that one act, total grace, total God-sent grace, those sins are no more. What you did as a child, yeah, I know you, you, you shoplifted that sucker out of that store. I know you did. It doesn't count if you've acted ask for forgiveness what you did when that cashier gave you the wrong change to your credit I know what you did but that sin is no more if you ask for forgiveness you see Jesus took every sin past present and future and he did away with them as long as you repented Now, if you haven't repented, you know what you need to do as soon as you can. And it's easy. Father, forgive me. I don't know what in the world got into me about Abby. I don't know why I was feeling so jealous. I guess it's because I love her so much. But forgive me for that sin of jealousy. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple. It's that simple. Do it. The fullness of the fact of what Jesus did for us on the cross is that he took every one of those sins and that includes jealousy. And tell me something, friends. Aren't you glad for what Jesus has done for you? Aren't you? He has set us free from the bondage of sin. And that even includes jealousy. Praise God. May the peace of Jesus Christ be yours. Now on the bottom of your bulletin page is my email address. And I had it put there and it's going to stay there every Sunday. Because if you're wondering about this person that I spend so much time talking about, this Jesus, if you're wondering how he can indeed change lives, If you're wondering, drop me a note. Just drop me a line. And I'll be glad to communicate with you and tell you about the Savior that I love and that I follow. Let us pray. Lord, we love you. And we thank you. 
And we thank you for what Jesus has done for each and every one of us. No matter how bad we've been or how good we thought we were, Jesus has set everything straight and we don't have to worry. So we make this prayer in his name. And the church said what? Amen. I want you to have a good week this week. But I want you to get in the habit of counting those blessings. And I want you to do one other thing for me. And I'm earnestly pleading with you to do this. This is more than just asking. This is a plea. Take out one of these. And read at least one verse. Not for my sake. My future is guaranteed. For your sake. Read one verse. And then watch as God goes to work on it. In your heart. I love you. And God bless you. Amen.